Well, hello everyone. Hi, anime Sanya. Today in this video, we'll be sharing with you guys what basically is an RDR examination and what is the mode of conducting, how the exam is conducted, and how should one prepare for it. So, discussing first of all with what is RTR examination and why is it important for us. So, RTR examination is basically a mode of conducting a test to check the proficiency of a candidate in the language of aviation, which is known as aviation English. So, the need for aviation English was to make the communications as short as possible, that is, make the communications more effective, while thereby reducing the chances of any miscommunication happening between any two recipients. That means that the, the language that is used by a pilot and an ATC to communicate with each other is known as aviation English and this must be effective. That means more should be communicated in less words and the probability of happening a miscommunication should be reduced as much as possible. Now why do we need RDR examination? So we need to clear RDR examination basically to work as a pilot and call. operate the radio apparatus in a flight it is mandatory that you will have an FRDOL or either a FRDOLR. There are different kinds of RDR examination that happen that is RDR A, RDR P and RDR C. These are just the different kinds although these exam exams are conducted more or so in the same pattern but there are differences in this. So if you guys want to know more about FRTOL, FRTOLR, RTRA, RTRP or RTRC, different kinds of exams and licenses that are there for uh, radio apparatus related to the radio apparatus and radio communication. You can uh, let me know in the comments down below. So I'll make a separate video for that explaining you all the integrities of each and every license with the regulations and everything. Moving on towards understanding how the examination of RTR actually happens. This exam is conducted by WPC that is Wireless Planning and Coordination Wing. It comes under the Department of Telecommunication. This is the only examination that you need to clear that is not conducted by DGCA. So WPC basically issues its schedule of conducting this examination at end of each year that is in December. A whole schedule for the next year is published by WPC. Now the schedule is right now you can see on your screens. From this you will be able to see that this exam is conducted six times in a year. That means in ev every two months, in the interval of two months, this exam is conducted. There are different centers that are allotted for different attempts of this examination. So basically the only center with two attempts is Delhi as you can see from the list. For giving any attempt what you need to first do is you need to apply for that and you can see in this table that there are dates of application as well mentioned. For how to apply this examination I have made a separate video on that what are the different difficulties that you might face while filling the form out for that examination. I have made a separate video for that the link for that video I will be putting down in the description. So you can watch that for uh, guidance on how to fill the RTR examination form. Now coming back the 15 days ka time that has been allotted that you can see on your screens right now for if, for the application to be sent to a RLO that is regional licensing office of that respective city on which the attempt is coming you need to send a physical copy to this RLO which must be received in between these days you must make sure that the copy is received in between this time to the RLO and not your sending of the documents in between these days the document must be received by the RLO in between these days right once you get your form submission now what you need to do you need to wait as far as let's take for an example that you are going for February attempt. For February attempt before the start of the examination date of examination at least 15 to 20 days before the examination the list that you can see right now on your screens a list like this which is the list of admitted candidates is issued by WPC on its official website. These regular updates we keep on updating on our WhatsApp group you can check that out. Uh, you can join the WhatsApp group for each and every notes, guidance and anything that you can need. We are always there for you uh, for you guys there. Now on this list of admitted candidates you will see that around 3000 to 3500 candidates apply for a single attempt. Now this examination is conducted uh, not in a similar way as compared to other examinations. That means you will see that in front of each and every name there is a time and there is a date written. A time and date is given 
for the student to appear for that examination i'll simplify it for you guys examination is conducted for uh, students in a batch of 30 to 40 students each day there are two batches that would be examined so this examination to examine all the candidates it takes about 40 days that is more than a month about one and a half month it takes for wpc to conduct one examination it is not like another examination that is conducted in a single day and i'll explain you later in the video that why it is so because of the pattern of the examination and how it is conducted. The examination is basically conducted into two parts, the details of which I would be covering in a little later in the video. Part one and part two. Once you appear for first, you appear for part one. And if you are able to clear that part one, you proceed for your part two, part two examination. Now, the results of part one are issued on the, the same day of examination, while the results of part two are not issued on the same day. But when examination for all the students have been completed for in that 40 to 45 days after the last date of examination after around a week or 10 days after the last day of examination you will get a list like this that you can see on your screens right now WPC issues a list of students who have successfully cleared your RTR examination. For successfully clearing the RTR examination, you need to clear both part one and part two. Like once you clear your part one, but you are not able to make through part two, in the next attempt, you will have to again clear part one and part two, your RTR cleared. Now, once you have become fortunate enough to get your name in this list, you have uh, made it, you have cleared your RTR examination. The next step is to apply for your RTR license, which is also referred to as your certificate of pro Efficiency. For applying for your RTR license, I have made a separate video for regarding the process of applying for your RTR license. Uh, I will be putting down in the uh, description the link for that video as well. You can check out if you have uh, fortunately got your name on this list. Then uh, you can check out the video to get a complete guidance on how to actually uh, apply for your RTR license. So this whole cycle of examination happens each and every two months. That is the exam happens six times a year and this cycle is repeated again and again and again at different centers. This is how basically the exam overall is conducted. Now moving on the specifics of how basically examination happens, what more specific about what is part one examination and what comes in part two examination. So part one ex examination is basically a written test. It is the only subjective written paper that you would be writing while for becoming a pilot. Other than if you are eligible to go for technical performance papers, other than that, this would be the only paper subjective written paper that you would be writing throughout your career. All the other DGC examination happens in MCQ mode on online basis. So you'll just have to tick the correct answer. Now for the part one on your screens right now you can see how a part one paper looks like okay now i'll explain you the whole scenario how a part one examination actually happens so first a batch of 30 or 40 students that whatever the number of students is that has been mentioned in your the list of admitted candidates they show up for the examination on the day of examination now the, for the amount of students that have shown up that have uh, appear that have actually reported on the day of examination they are further divided into groups of six or seven based on the amount of uh, radio apparatus that is available on the examination center. Now these groups are sent to uh, appear for their part one examination group by group. First the group one would go for their part one examinations then the second group would wait. Once the part one examination of group one is conducted they'll move out of the room. Part group two will go like this. The examination for all the students is conducted. For the part one how would basically the sitting arrangement would look like is that you would go on the examination center you will find that you have a seat you have a chair and a table which is facing to a wall behind you would be sitting an invigilator or the examiner examiner would be able to see you but you won't be be able to see the examiner because he will be sitting behind you you both will be talking through a radio apparatus that i was referring uh, that i was uh, referring to you earlier and you would be wearing a headphones and a mic and through that you will be communicate communicating with the uh, examiner in this examination how this happens is like a real flight scenario from taking from point a to point b is conducted and the different phases of flight and the situations that might arise in a flight are taken into account in this paper a mixture of that is uh, there in all the different papers. What happens actually is that you act as a pilot while the examiner act as an ATC and you communicate through uh, the language of aviation. There are five questions in the paper that you need to actually solve as per the syllabus that you will once you learn that how to actually solve these papers you will learn that you will have to communicate with the ATC and how actually you do that is you get this paper you have number of different charts 
ओके यू हैव क्वेश्चन पेपर यू हैव चार्ट्स एंड यू हैव एन आंसर की इन एन आंसर की व्हाट यू आर सपोज्ड टू डू इज यू नीड टू रीड द क्वेश्चन यू नीड टू कॉम्प्रिहेंड दैट व्हाट इज द सिचुएशन एंड नाउ यू नीड टू रिएक्ट देन यू विल लुक एट द मैप यू विल यू विल हैव टू रीड द चार्ट्स एंड एवरीथिंग देन यू विल हैव टू सॉल्व दैट क्वेश्चन यू विल हैव टू राइट योर आंसर्स एंड साइमल्टेनियसली ट्रांसमिट व्हाट यू आर राइटिंग टू द एटीसी टू द एग्जामिनर देन द एग्जामिनर विल बी telling you you are supposed to write that as well and understand that as well and then answer. so this in this examination you are supposed to do multitasking which requires a lot and lot and lot of practice to become proficient so that you will be able to clear part 1 so part 1's weightage is around 100 marks and the passing marks are 50 if you are able to score above 50 marks you clear your part 1 examination and the results are announced immediately after the completion of your test if you are able to clear your part 1 examination you are sent for part 2 part 2 examination is basically an interview your interview is taken by one officer from wireless planning and coordination wing and another officer from direct general of civil aviation that is wpc and dgc there are two officers that take your interview in interview not only your uh, knowledge for specifically for the subjects of radio navigation and air regulation will be checked but your personality and how you present yourself will also be checked interviews are about checking overall person personality in addition to knowledge as well right the part 2 examination is also of 100 marks in which the passing marks are 50 and both the examiners both the examiners that are the interviewers will be giving you marks based on your performance in the interview the questions that have been frequently asked in the question papers we keep that we keep sharing those papers and everything on our whatsapp and telegram channel and group you can uh, again join that and you will be always be updated with regarding all the examination having happening related to rtr now once you have given your part 2 the results won't be announced immediately after the part 2 examination but you will as mentioned earlier you will have to wait for till all the examination for all the students is completed for this 40 45 days and from the last date of examination around a week or 10 days later wpc will issue the list of students who have passed the examination who will then future will who will then have to apply for the rtr license and obviously you will be appearing for uh, the interview you are supposed to dress formally as you will be going in an interview and uh, your etiquette should be as per the requirements of an interview right now guys i have cleared my rtr examination went through my studies i have helped my couple of my friends learn rtr from scratch to most advanced level i have taken numerous mock tests of students of both part 1 and part 2 and standing on uh, with all of that experience i'll move on towards talking about how should one prepare for this examination how should basically you prepare for examination see aviation rtr is about checking your proficiency in the language of aviation language of aviation i literally mean by language of aviation language of aviation there are letters which are pronounced in a certain way there are different there are numbers which are pronounced in different different way there are words that have specific meaning with those words you from certain sentences those sentences are used in different phases of flight as different kind of formats different kind of formats change as per different situations as the flight arises and there are different rules and regulations with which you need to communicate with the atc which you must be uh, thorough about there are many things to be taken care of for learning this language of aviation you will in the examination not just that you will be writing you would be writing and you would be communicating as well so the way you speak the way you use that language is also very 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 important getting all this knowledge from a book is something that is very difficult to do for an average student for any student it is very difficult to do so basically the official documents that you can actually refer for uh, as a syllabus for this uh, for studying for your rtr is uh, civil aviation requirements section 9 series b part 3 specifies all the ma- majorly everything that you need to know about the conduction of rtr exam and where you can refer to it as your study material you can find that on the whatsapp group as well and uh, Uh, there is a book published by author R K Bali, which uh, which you can see on your screens right now. When I started my preparation, I thought that I'll just read this book and go for the examination. But it was it came out to me as a surprise that I was not able to understand even the ten percent of the things that were written in this book. There is a certain way that you need to learn this language, and it is most suitable when you learn it from a person who have actually cleared and learned this. a language it could be more effectively taught from a person to another person rather than reading it and just mugging up the information all yeah you will need to learn information on a lot of things for your part to interview 
but for your part one you need thorough practice you need mock tests right you need to understand all this language all these formats words sentences situations uh, the different phases of flight when you will be applying different formats this this paper is very dynamic after even after learning the uh, even after being good with the language you need to practice a lot of question paper 50 to 60 question papers you need to practice them you need to practice few, these 50 to 60 questions papers two to three to four times to get thorough with how you would be performing in your examination you would be multitasking there you need to enter it in your subconscious mind the way you would be writing and the way you would be speaking so that you can use your conscious memory to think about what you would be doing in the next situation otherwise without much practice doing everything simultaneously becomes a tough job now for the preparation i would highly recommend that you take guidance from someone you thoroughly practice and then you would that, this this would this decision would turn out for you a real time saver as well as you will gain a lot of information regarding how you will be communicating on uh your radio apparatus and everything so in this video guys i conducted each and everything regarding how actually rtr exam happens to the most uh, specific details of how each and every part actually happens and the examination is conducted then i shared you with my views that how you can prepare for this examination and everything so this in this video i tried to compile each and everything that you will need for know about rtr examination in another video i would be sharing with you guys my experience of rtr examination and the go to tips that you can use while going through your examination so do uh, i would put the link of that video as well in the description so do check out that video and in, in that video you would get tips for your uh, rtr examination as well that i used to clear my rtr examination so guys this would be all for today i hope that this video helps you guys in your in knowing about rtr examination and your preparation as well anything that if you have any queries you can uh, uh, talk to me in the comments or on the whatsapp group both are the ways to communicate with me if you thought that this information was useful for you please give it a like it really helps a lot you can please subscribe to my channel and we'll be working together to put good content for you guys in the future this is animesh sanyal i'll be signing off bye bye